Well, hi, everybody. Welcome to GW Center for Integrative Medicine podcast. I'm, I'm your host, Dr. Misha Kogan. And today I have a very special pleasure of hosting our new physician, Dr. Robert Pendergrast, who is going to talk about what he does. Uh, we're super excited. He's a very experienced pediatrician with, with decades of experience. And um, we thought that uh, we'll bring him in for our mini cast um, to talk about what he does, what he's interested in, and to make sure that everybody knows um, and if anybody wants to see him by all means. So Robert, um, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, first of all, it's just a, a real pleasure to be joining the uh, GW Center. Um, uh, maybe something you should know or, or uh, your listeners should know about me is that I've been practicing integrated medicine for a long time, but it's been a bit of a solo effort. Um, I, I've been uh, on my own a bit since I did my training many years ago, and I've been looking forward to joining with a team. And this is uh, really a dream come true for many years. So uh, background, I guess, uh, what's that? For us too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it's, uh, hopefully it'll be mutual. Um, so uh, background, yes, I um, finished uh, pediatric residency all the way back in 1986, then did a, a fellowship in adolescent medicine because I was interested in the care of teenagers, especially um, and really largely from the standpoint of, of the impact of adolescent medicine on public health. I had an interest in population health and looking at preventive medicine especially and believe that the adolescent age group is um, just such a wonderful time for laying down health habits that will impact a person's lifespan. Mm -hmm. So that was uh, largely my impetus for doing the adolescent trust medicine me, fellowship. I, trust me, I totally get you. I have two teenage boys, 13 and 15. I'm in exactly that phase. Maybe that's part of the reason we hired you. <laughs> well, yeah. And um, believe me, um, perfect can be the enemy of the good in that, in that circumstance. We, 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 we can't really expect perfection, but we just begin to lay down little building blocks of good habits that hopefully will, will come back in their memory at some point in adulthood. Uh, regardless, uh, and it's just been, um, I have found interestingly since my residency and fellowship that many years ago, that I've continued to just enjoy practice more and more, that I really love what I do. Um, in my, my longest standing job has been on the faculty at the Medical College of Georgia in Augusta, Georgia, teaching residents and medical students and directing the adolescent medicine training program there. I've uh, been doing that since the late 90s, um, but it was really about that time in the late 1990s that I began to develop my interest in integrative medicine and started training um, because I saw kids, especially kids with chronic pain, who had very few options between either too much medicine or too much pain. And I wanted to be able to offer something different, a, a third way to look at this, which was really why I started my integrated medicine training at that time. Yeah. And so what, what was your integrated medicine training like? Well, initially, I started in mind-body medicine um, because I was exposed to pediatric clinical hypnosis through a professional conference and began to get training in clinical hypnosis for kids because I saw that as a particularly powerful way to help kids with chronic pain. And that, um, that training in hypnosis has been validated as a really wonderful tool um, really since uh, over 20 years ago that I started doing that. Um, and I can tell you just an example. Um, I still remember when I got home from my second uh, hypnosis training workshop and was ready, I felt, to do some clinical work with it, mm -hmm. um, a, a little boy came to me in the clinic with chronic migraines. And of course, you know, you're not usually excited when you see a kid with chronic migraines, but I was excited because I felt like now I have a tool. Mm -hmm. I know what to do for this guy. And the thrilling thing for me was to watch this uh, 
he wasn't even a teenager yet. He was maybe 10 years old to watch this little guy um, acquire skills that he could use to control his own physiology and turn down those headaches and be more comfortable. So not only did he have a way to skip out on the emergency room visits, to skip out on the prescriptions, to skip out on missed school days, but he had a tool that he could use for self-regulation that would then begin to apply for the rest of his life. Now, I don't know what's happened to that little guy. He's probably in his thirties now, so I have no idea. But what my hope is that he has known since then how to use his own mind to control his thinking, his emotions, his physiology, and his behavior, and to be the, <laughs> the captain of his own ship, as it were, for his health. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's just an example of, of how excited I was to, to start my integrated medicine training using clinical hypnosis. I went on from there um, because I felt like that was just the opening of the door that uh, began to, to drive me to ask questions, to inquire more, to essentially put myself back in school. I took other courses, but then finally I did enroll in the, um, in the fellowship at the University of Arizona for their two-year integrative medicine fellowship program, um, which was the, uh, the icing on the cake, as it were, that gave me um, so many more clinical tools from nutritional medicine to botanical herbal medicine, familiarity with uh, energy medicine, acupuncture, Chinese medicine, Ayurveda, not, not that I'm trained as an acupuncturist or energy healer, those sort of things, but just to be an aware. Oh, and, uh, and things like manipulative medicine, um, the value of uh, things like osteopathic manipulation, Etc. So that really rounded out my training, and I was able then to begin incorporating those aspects of training into my clinical encounters, not only in a consultation clinic for kids that were referred to me with difficult problems, but also in my primary care setting. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. So, um, so you got, you already basically we're already starting to schedule patients with you. Um, tell our listeners, what kind of patients would you like to see um, who you think should contact us to sign up for your services? Sure. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, um, many of the children and teens who've come to see me have been those who have been to more than one doctor already mm -hmm. and have been frustrated with the outcome. And those are often kids with chronic conditions like headaches, like abdominal pain, mm -hmm. like tick disorders, like other habit disorders, sleep disorders, um, even anxiety disorders or mood disorders. Um, again, I'm not a, a therapist. I'm not a psychologist or a psychiatrist, but uh, you know, I think I can take a holistic look at that and recommend, for example, for any mood disorders, what other resources uh, of a mental health professional, for example. Um, so those conditions, um, oh, I would say um, I am most experienced probably because of my adolescent medicine training with older kids and teens. Mm -hmm. um, I would be comfortable seeing younger children, especially if we think there are, um, maybe food allergies or sensitivities that are causing um, chronic atopy, um, asthma allergies, recurrent ear infections, those sort of things. We could talk about uh, food allergy testing and sensitivity for those. Um, yeah. And of course, you know, we're already doing all these things you're mentioning in a clinic. So we already have all the setup for, for patients and the parents right. to come in right. and do the testing, for example, you mentioned, or if they, if you think that they would need an acupuncture, for example, we actually have Angela Gabriel who's specializing in pediatric acupuncture. So she would be happy to see you. Oh yeah. And this, you know, that's just music to my ears um, to be able to have those resources on the same team. is uh, such a gift um, to not oh, have I, to, to be honest with you. We have been looking for integrative pediatrician for consults for a long time because, you know, 
there there's just not a lot of you out there <laughs> i have i tried to recruit i tried to recruit a good friend of mine who is in pennsylvania but you know she's tied up there she can't really come over here um, yeah so yeah. It's, it's i'm personally excited because i think that the area really needs more uh pediatricians who can take a holistic view of, on kids because um you know if my kids go to holistic primary care pediatrician and there, i think there's only two or three in the whole town yeah um, yeah well just just to be clear i'm not planning to provide primary care right here right. um as people wonder am i available for that no i this is a intended to be a consult consultative practice yeah and we want to make it very clear so that you know there's no confusion uh somebody looking for for sort of pediatrics but but you know but that's also in line with the fact that for now at least our clinic does not we're out of network for all the insurances and so you know we we, we don't want to send the wrong message to to our possible future patients yeah so this yeah. is a consultative practice mm -hmm. right and you know and i do want to add a couple of huh and your plan is to really do mostly telemedicine, which also would would potentially. Yeah, at this out. point, yeah, telemedicine is the uh, is the plan uh, for the time being, um, because I'm 600 miles away from you. Um, but uh, yeah, you're planning on moving for. Are you planning yeah. on coming a little closer now? So there, there is there is talk of moving closer. Um, it, it's uh, let's not let's not. Uh, Let's not buy any real estate yet, but uh, I do want to add. Um, I do want to add as I was thinking about the type of patients that I'd like to see. I do have an interest and in, and in some experience with chronic fatigue, um, which affects more kids than I think people realize. Um, I would be uh, really honored to see kids with chronic fatigue recognizing that um, it's a long, long road, and I am not. I'm not aware of any real miracle quick cures, but I think integrated medicine holds the best treatment um, uh, treatment op opportunity for chronic fatigue um, that I know of, uh, along with um, POTS and other related dysautonomias. Um, those are difficult, and I'm interested. I'm interested especially in exploring uh, biofeedback for heart rate variability. Mm -hmm. in that group of patients and i think many of my adolescents um really really find that learning to do resonant frequency breathing is amazing when you talk about um, autonomic disorders um especially yeah i kind of wonder we have not been seeing long COVID kids uh but i have i do know that they're there uh, yeah. you know, we we haven't had a provider before to offer that, but I think that's also uh, I don't know I don't know what your current experience with that is either. I don't know if there are. Yeah, and I would say that that's also true. I've not I've not seen long COVID kids, um, and I'm not sure where they are because I suspect that they're out there too. I think perhaps they're just not. Maybe maybe they're not getting appropriate referrals um or maybe not even being recognized like i, I will tell you the story if, if we want to think of another clinical case of a young man that came to me at uh probably 16 years old he was referred by neurology for chronic headaches but when i took his history i said you know i i I'm, i really want to help you with the headaches but you have you have mecfs chronic fatigue syndrome and they, they were so relieved actually to get a diagnosis because nobody had ever put the pieces together for them before and said, yes, you fit the, the diagnostic criteria. And so we need to look at that comprehensively and address the sleep disorder, address the, the orthostatic intolerance along with the chronic pain um, and the depression that went along with it and not just look at one piece of the puzzle, but trying to put the whole puzzle together. And that's what I think we, we're going to wind up doing for the uh, uh, the uh, long COVID kids, but I don't, I don't think they've been properly identified yet. Let me ask you some of the questions that always intrigue me and interest, um, not necessarily related to the clinical practice. So, you know, you've been sure. uh, one of the senior leaders of integrative pediatrics for decades. Um, where do you think the field is going? Uh, because I'm, you know, I'm not, 
I, I'm seeing mostly like an adult. So, and and I think in adult medicine, there's more opening for, for what we do. But in pediatrics, are we seeing the shift? Are there kids being taken care of more holistically in general? Or uh, where is that? I think it's still, um, I think it's still pretty early. Um, there have been pioneers in the field and, and you and I both know who those names are that have uh, that are particularly published in botanical medicine, herbal medicine for kids. But I think um, the uh, practice of that is still pretty limited. Um, my hope is that we'll establish a better, uh, what's the right word, better um, comfort with the evidence base for botanical medicine in children. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, I just saw a, a, a an article come through my email this week on echinacea as a uh, prevention for viral respiratory infections in kids. And of course, you know, that's pretty well known in herbal circles, but it's not well known outside of, of botanical medicine circles. So I, I'd like to see more research become really uh, widespread. Mm -hmm. I think we've got a long ways to go in nutritional medicine in, in uh, pediatric integrated medicine and really talking about what, um, what's the value of an anti-inflammatory diet in um, maybe even autoimmune conditions in childhood. Um, I think we've got a long way to go in understanding the gut microbiome and the impact of uh, changes early on in gut microbiome and the impact of overuse of antibiotics on gut flora and how that might impact on um, uh, immunity and atopic disease like asthma and allergies. Um, my hope is that we're going to see more and more widespread, um, widespread um, acceptance of pediatric mind-body medicine in helping kids with things like learning self-hypnosis, helping kids with meditation practices and the use of the breath and um, yoga, uh, you name it. There's so many opportunities for children to learn self-regulation through good mind-body medicine. Um, but I, I just, I don't think we've got, um, <laughs> you know, we're in a country where we're <laughs> we're still struggling to get universal preschool, um, yeah. much less mind-body medicine. So, yeah. uh, you know, pardon my political reference there, but, um, but I think there are some justice and equity issues that we need to talk about as well. If we, if we wanna talk about pediatric integrated medicine, we have to lay it on a foundation of universal access to healthcare. Um, we we just we've got such a long way to go and I, I would say i'm i'm with my pediatric brethren in wishing for that outcome yeah any uh most recent wisdom pearl like one wisdom pearl that stands out right away most recent uh wisdom pearls i would say um oh maybe uh if i was speaking to healthcare professionals i would say um get excited about integrative medicine and pediatric mind-body medicine because it's, it's, uh, it has made my practice more fun the older I get. Um, and so that would be my little pearl for uh, people thinking about doing this as a career, yeah. Um, for patients and parents, uh, my pearl would be, um, I, I have learned to trust what kids say. Mm -hmm. um, the kids often are intuitive about what's going on with them, particularly when you ask, um, what do you think is really causing your tummy aches, for example? Mm -hmm. um, you know, and that's true for kids who've been to the gastroenterologist and had scopes and tests and all this kind of the other thing. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the kids are more adept at naming it. Um, and so I, I I want to be good at really listening to children and listening to teens and listening to parents and respecting their viewpoint as well. Even if sometimes what they have to tell you may not be very comfortable for the parents. Uh, yeah. Well, as parents, we all kind of get used to being uncomfortable, right? Yeah. 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 Well, great. Um, we 
I always try to keep this short. Uh, any last words of uh, wisdom or anything you want to add that we didn't cover? Well, um, oh, you know, yeah, here's here's one thing. I, I'm a gardener. I, I grow food. Awesome. And uh, I'm still uh, here in, in the deep south in South Carolina. Mm -hmm. I'm still... Uh, picking bok choy out of my garden and have brussels sprouts in and december cauliflower <laughs> in december yeah amazing and uh I'm, I'm crossing my fingers for the brussels sprouts and cauliflower because i'm not really sure that's gonna go okay but i planted really late but regardless um growing a garden if you can get kids if you have a little patch of ground even even big pots of dirt on a patio get kids involved in gardening and growing food and knowing what that's like to see a plant come up and pick something like a squash and take it in the kitchen and learn how to cook it. You know, that transforms a child's relationship with food and the earth and their body and what's good. Um, I love for kids to be involved in gardening and cooking. The more we can do that, the better. Amazing, wonderful. So, um, yeah, so thank you, Robert, so much. So again, this is Robert Pendergast, and he's our new integrated pediatrician. Uh, if you've been listening to this minicast, um, this is the GW Center for Integrative Medicine. You can find us at gwcim.com. Our phone number is 202-833-5055. Robert is already on the website, and patients can already start scheduling with him. So do contact us if you need to. And I'm sure I'll bring Robert back for something a bit more specific in, the, in, in, in due time. So thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you, Robert. All right.